Uh, guys, hello. Thank you so much for taking the time to talk to us. Hi. Hi Brit. A Brit. A Brit, yeah. In a very, very hot, sweaty London today. It's a, it's a rarity these days, but hey. It's boiling. It's absolutely boiling, but it's nice. We can't complain because that's what we do. We complain about being cold and then it gets hot. <laughs> I don't like the hot weather anyway, so... I will complain. I want the yeah, clouds to come back. I, I am a complainer as well, so <laughs> <laughs> don't like the heat. Anyway, so guys, congratulations on the show. Thank you. Thank um, you. I've watched uh, a little bit, but I've kept myself on tenterhooks by not blitzing all of it just yet because I want to know what happens. So I just wanted to begin maybe with you, Elarika, first about when you read the scripts for the first time, when uh, you met your showrunner and everything else. I mean, what, what kind of attracted you both to this and why did you think it was such an important story to, to tell? It, it was an important story from the beginning of me reading, I think the first or second page. Uh, I was like, ah, this is a great story. This is a great character. And I couldn't put it down. Um, and I, I remember calling my agent because at first I was a bit like, oh, I don't really know about, you know, a show about strip club. I'm not really sure. Not for any reason in particular, only that, you know, I've seen what has been on telly about strippers and strip clubs before. And it's just, just like, you know, it depends on what they're going to do. So uh, then picking it up and reading it and going, oh my God, this is so good. And you're always told not to get too excited about a, a, a script you know, or, or hopefully getting it. Um, but I did, I did, I called my agent and I was like, I want this one, <laughs> this is so good. Um, and then, because obviously I'm over here um, in the UK, in London, I had to do a Skype call uh, with Katori. Um, and we did an audition that way. And then I did another one and that was with our pilot director as well, Karina Evans. Um, and it was all a weird, quite weird situation when you're doing that because there's like, you see you're talking to a screen, basically what we're doing now, it's quite weird. Um, <laughs> so, you know, the beginnings of it was, was, was interesting. It was different from being in the room and, and doing all of that. But like I said, I knew I really wanted to play the role and there was a, like a short kind of break in between where no one really heard anything, that, you know, production stuff was going on. Um, and then finally, you know, hearing that I got the role, I was like, ah, and then that, that thing sets in where it's like, you have to do it justice. This is a brilliant uh, script and it's an, an amazing character and you've got to do it justice. And I, I just felt very proud and honored and, and very uh, excited that Katori trusted me with Autumn Night because she's a great, great, great character, great woman in general. Yeah, I can imagine. Uh, Parker, was it was it was it the same for you? That kind of the the conglomeration of of everything, you know, the showrunner, the cast, the stories, the characters. I mean, it just was was too 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 too, too difficult for you to not want to pursue. Yeah, I mean, kind of for man, I didn't know all that stuff in the beginning. I just got the script, and most stuff you get is pretty whack. I'm not gonna lie. Like, you get a script through, and then they say like who's producing or whatever, and then more oftentimes than not. I call my agent and I go, they're making this? She goes, yeah. And I go, like, really? For TV? Anyway, so this one I got and I was really, I was blown away. It was really, it was very exciting. Um, the integration of music as well. I love, I love hip hop. I love music in general. So that um, I could really picture it in my mind. And then what I see on the screen is even better. The colors are vibrant, the story, the actors, my fellow castmates, man, they brought it. Um, and so it just seemed like an exciting opportunity to play something very realistic, which is kind of, I, I like that. I like the realistic acting. Um, and a part of culture that we don't necessarily see on primetime TV um, very often at all. So yeah, I just want to be a part of it. And I mean, yeah, you, you touched on it there, but it's a, it's a, it's a world that we, we very rarely get to see it's sort of in, in, in raw elements, if you like. We've seen it in things like sh obviously Showgirls and then obviously last year with Hustlers kind of shined a different light on, on strippers and, and everything else. I mean, do you think this one, is that is as important as say something like Hustlers in that it, it takes the world and treats it real, treats it with with kind of dignity and, and really gets into the the kind of nitty gritty, if you like, and and just doesn't shy away from what the world is, but but treats it in such a, with such respect. Yeah, I, I I mean our story is uh, is a completely different take on the world. It's a completely different club, uh, different characters for sure. I think just in general, telling the stories of, of these women in the club is important because it's been such a taboo for such a long time. You know, the kind of conversations after Showgirls and 
and and what that did for the industry and what that did for the actors afterwards i feel like we're in a different place now and actually hiding hiding those those stories hiding those people because society frown upon it is no good it's no good for anybody in fact we all need to learn and and we all need to tell stories and we all need to be open with different lives and different people in order to grow as a society and 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 teach our children as well that there's all different kinds of people and it's okay and everybody has a has a, a different outlook everyone has different jobs and what they do to survive you know that's that's what they do and that's fine and having an opinion on it is it's important to learn before you have something to say about it especially if it's in a negative manner and what was it like working with with Katori because obviously I know this is kind of her her baby in 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 many respects and I can imagine it it must have been great to not just work with her but to be with somebody who had kind of nurtured this from I think it was a play beforehand into this into this kind of very very big very important tv show I mean what was it like to work with her and see see what she was doing and to be around her because I can imagine that was such a rewarding experience for for both of you yeah well I uh, I think Parker will agree she's a complete energy in itself she's fantastic and she set the tone for the show and um the work ethic as well her writing her, her shows that she's done like i um i'm so happy i got to see tina in in london and it was incredible and her words just come off of the page and that's what she's done with p valley i'm still there's still moments where i'm like oh i got to work with that woman oh my god i'm still working with her i still speak to her you know it's it's really really cool it's it's inspiring she inspired me every day on set um she still does now and um and i'm constantly praising her for putting out these stories and um for doing such amazing writing and like parker said it's not always that you can pick up a script and be like this is amazing and 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 we did that with katori's work and it's incredible and i feel very blessed very to work with her uh yeah man i mean just to echo that i mean her work ethic i get tired on set because i mean it's like meetings and emails and well-written like uh I don't know. She'd give notes to different directors. I don't know if it was a normal thing, but they were thorough. And I was like, when do you even have time to do this? It was that kind of stuff. So then when you see that kind of output, and then it makes sense. You kind of retrace your steps. You go, of course, this kind of person would write a script so thorough and so good, and the characters so full and developed. Um, so I suppose I wasn't, I wasn't surprised by anything other than I don't know when she sleeps. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good point, actually. When does she sleep? Because she seems to be <laughs> all over it, as it were. Yeah. Um, I've talked to I've talked to a lot of people recently about obviously TV is becoming obviously in current climates. Everyone's kind of going to TV more and more because, you know, fill, fill the days and, and try and try and keep saying them at the best of times. But TV even beforehand was becoming such a such a I mean, it's always been such a rich platform for so many things. But in more recent years, it's become such a great breeding ground for so much amazing content and for actors to kind of spend time with with characters whether it's you know 10 episodes 12 episodes you can really get into the kind of the, the mythology of the character to use that to use that phrase I mean how rewarding is it for you guys as actors to be able to spend so much time not just with your own character but with other characters whereas on a film even though you'd be there for a long time the audience would only get sort of a couple of hours with you it's a, two different things, isn't it? Like, I've, you know, I've done film and, and TV and I've also done TV in England and, and now TV in America and it's a different, it's a whole different vibe. You know, it's, you're shooting for longer time, sometimes shorter times on longer um, shows. We're having, we've got eight episodes for our show, but you can watch shows to like 22 episodes in the States. You know, we don't do it like that at home. Um, so, it's an experience within itself. I think it's, it is nice to grow with the character, to learn, um, to learn about their relationships with the other characters and, and, um, and to just have that journey the same time as, as the writing kind of unfolds. That for me was, was really great. Um, in film, it's like you enter the world in a certain point in their life and there's the beginning and the middle and the end. And with this, it kind of, you don't know who's going to walk through the door and um you know if we go on to do other seasons what's going to happen how the characters are going to grow um i think it's great for actors in general to experience both and to have the chance to to like i said grow with their character and um and be on the journey at the same time i mean for me 
I did think this could be this could have been a movie. If this is in the 80s or 90s, perhaps this would have been a movie, P Valley. Um, but one of the things that I love about television um, is that you can binge and for eight hours you can really get to know these characters. And that's what I like. As far as I guess acting it, I don't feel any different. But um, oh, that being said, I've never i never gone back for a second season or of anything I've been in. So hopefully I'll see what that's like. Um, but that's gotta be dope because one thing that I love in projects or things that I watch is if I can imagine seeing that person on, on the street, you know? And so this world that she's built with the music and everybody who, I mean, from the set design to the actors, it feels very real and you get a lot of it if we get, you know, eight, 10, 12, whatever episodes. Um, so yeah, it was a great opportunity to bring it to people's homes. And like you said, yeah. people are stuck at home, so. Still stuck at home, yeah. Um, but one thing I did want to ask was about your about your characters, because there's a few, not to give anything away, because I want people to kind of experience it like like I have and everyone else will, but a few a few early sparks between your two characters. And I just wondered what it was about them when you read them and, and what you kind of link uh, caught on to in their in their characteristics and their story that kind of wanted you made you want to to play them maybe Parker I'll, I'll come to you uh first about about Andre and just what was it about him and his kind of story that kind of drew you into him and made you think you could play him right um suppose I have notes here not to give any spoilers away so without giving any spoilers away I'll say he goes back to his hometown on mysterious business and that's something man I live in London I've been here 12 years now and when I go back to Indianapolis, I mean, there's there's things that I want to do to help my city. I mean, um, just recently, we've got just a lot of homicides, like record numbers. And so there's things that I want to do, and I feel like I can fix it. And I'm like, oh, I know these streets, and I know these people, and I could do something. And that's definitely, you know, Andre Watkins. He thinks he's helping out his hometown. Um, so I think that's the main part. He went away. He got his, you know, there's like a brain drain from Indiana where I'm from. And I think Chuck Lisa experienced it with him going away to get his education. And now he lives down in Atlanta and he's got the nice house and, and he's trying to come back and do something important. Um, so I can definitely relate to that. Yeah, I say, obviously from what, we, from what we'll see of Autumn from the beginning is this very mysterious character that just kind of ends up, I think it said, uh, she washes up on the shore of the pink. Um, there's been, you know, this natural disaster and she's just had a really tough time, really difficult time. And she has ended up in this place um, with these, these women and these men um, and really just kind of trying to find a way to continue her journey, but this is just a stop. Um, and I think from reading it at first and just seeing how you know complex she was with all the different emotions and with what will unravel as well, what the audience will learn, um, she's been through a lot and I think I've seen her in so many of the women around me in my life um and so I can relate in some ways and and I when I read her I thought oh this is going to be trying this is going to be difficult and hard and I'm scared uh because I want to do a good job and, and she's just brilliant you know in in all different ways as just any other woman is and and I, I want to show that and so the fear of being able to show her story in a truthful manner and 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 be as strong as she is and and put all the emotion in the right place I think that that drew me in from the very beginning oh just a very quick final question and I mean obviously you spent some time with these characters now are they people that you you don't want to say goodbye to just yet are you hopeful that you'll get to explore a bit more uh just a very quick answer because I'm obviously out of time but is it are you are you hopeful that you get to go back and 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 see where where uh where the story takes them hell yeah without a shadow of a doubt and everybody else is going to feel the same too season two season two season two we hope <laughs> um yes Scott I'd like to follow up with Andre and see where, where he goes hope you, I, hope, um, I, hope you, I hope you do but again, man, I'd like to say more, but it would spoil some stuff. But yes, I definitely want to come back and, and explore Andre Watkins more. Absolutely. Well, I hope you do as well. Guys, I really enjoyed the show. Uh, thank you so much for your time. And uh, and stay, Thanks, stay safe as ever. <laughs> stay stay cool out there. Take care. Yeah. Cheers. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching Hey You Guys. Hey You Guys, huh? Hey, you guys, is yeah. that from the Goonies? It is indeed. Yeah. Nice. Hey You Guys.